I'm a pretty laid back guy. I often get mistaken for a stoner because of my demeanor and because I have a lot of stoner friends. <laughs> One of them recently gave me a certificate for a free medicinal marijuana card. I don't smoke weed. I don't really need to. Like I said, I'm a pretty relaxed guy. But I got my card because I support the legalization of marijuana. We have laws here in San Diego that say I'm allowed to. And if I'm afforded that privilege, I'm damn sure going to use it. And who knows, maybe I'll start. Nothing wrong with a little relaxation assistance. What should have been a normal doctor-patient interaction turned into a bizarro adventure, as do so many normal activities like getting dinner once you toss weed into the equation. <laughs> I didn't think it was asking too much to visit a traditional doctor's office and see a doctor, all the while both of us winking at each other and avoiding terms like weed and ganja. Imagine my surprise when I show up for my appointment and I find myself wandering an industrial warehouse complex, a place where no respectable business would be located. I half expect to see a forklift come wheeling around the corner with a pallet full of Mickey Mouse clocks bound for Chinatown somewhere. But they wouldn't even be real ones. They'd be knockoffs like Mitchell Mouse or something. <laughs> because like I said before, no legitimate business would be here. This is where shady businesses operate. But I press on, equally determined to not only find the office I seek, but to prove to myself that I know how to use MapQuest. <laughs> After a minute or two of wandering, I managed to find the door bearing the address I'd written down on the back cover of last week's reader. I should have seen this whole experience coming a mile away, based on how refined the beginning of the journey was. The certificate my friend gave me was emblazoned with huge, bold letters that screamed out, Free Weed Card. I walk in and I'm greeted by the reception desk nurse. Even he was a little off. It was this guy who looked like Dante from Clerks. <laughs> Which isn't the weird part. That's fine if you want to cultivate the look of an outdated pop culture reference. The weird part is when I said to him, do people ever tell you you look like a guy from Clerks? He dryly responded, I don't know, I've never seen that. <laughs> How have you never seen Clerks? <laughs> Especially working the desk at a dispensary. <laughs> That's a classic among stoners. It's practically they're gone with the wind. <laughs> I feel like there's no way this is an actual human being. I glance around the room, not a lot going on here. Just the waiting area and a door to the doctor's office. At least I assume it goes to the doctor's office. It could be a mop closet for all I know, judging by the look of this place. I feel less like I'm in a professional medical facility than I'm on the set of a public access cable show. They just don't belong here, like they're squatters. I picture the doctor and Dante walking around one day looking for some place to set up shop, and they stroll over here. The doctor's all, this place looks vacant. <laughs> Fuck it, drag some chairs and we're in business. <laughs> I immediately regret my decision to come here, but before I can come to my senses and bail, the doctor calls me back. She's this old Russian woman in a white lab coat. Against my better judgment, I trepidatiously follow her into the mop closet door, which turns out to be an actual exam room. She sits me down, straps my arm into one of those blood pressure reader machines, not the old school cuff and stethoscope, because she probably doesn't know how to use the cuff and stethoscope, <laughs> because I'm pretty sure she's not a real doctor. She probably found this machine in a dumpster behind a Walgreens or something and hauled it in. <laughs> Just picked it up out of the trash. I don't know what this is, but I could probably use it. Wipes it off and takes it to work. <laughs> I start imagining the backstory of this quack. Back in Russia, she wasn't a doctor at all. She wasn't even remotely associated with the field of medicine. She was probably just some regular woman, average at best in all regards, who one day accidentally made someone feel better when they were sick by giving them some of her homemade soup. <laughs> this person starts to feel better in spite of her efforts, either from their body's own natural defense mechanisms or out of sheer luck. So I guess I gotta ask myself one question. Do you feel lucky, punk? <laughs> Tell me what's wrong, she says in a thick Russian accent. I still feel the need to legitimize this whole process, to make it seem official. I'm not a pot smoker and there's really nothing wrong with me. I feel like I'm pulling a fast one on somebody. 
So I'm trying to think of stuff that might actually be relevant. The fact is that I'm basically just here to try to get permission to get weed legally because the government said I can. And to pull off this charade, I feel the need to dress it up to make it seem like a formal real-life doctor's appointment. Kind of like guys who go to Hooters. Well, the wings are really good. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> anyway, scrambling for some sort of correct response, I blurt out, well, when I was younger, I had ADD. And she says, drink celery juice for that. What else? Huh, I guess back in Russia, she was a farmer. Did not see that coming. Apparently, her vast repertoire of celery recipes is what garnered her an erroneous reputation as the local healer, with everyone in the village seeking her aid for whatever ailment may have been afflicting them. She might even have accidentally overachieved her way to maybe a 25% survival rate, but still, it's Russia. That's miracle-level shit right there. <laughs> Their state of medical knowledge is somewhere between praying to the clouds and rub some dirt on it. I pretty much checked out of the conversation after realizing that her medical advice to me was to drink celery juice. A doctor told me that. At least she's trying her best to play the part. Like she's sitting there all authoritative looking, lab coat, clipboard glasses, but not quite getting it. I feel like in her head, this was her big moment to shine. She's all, this is Olga's moment to shine by drawing on my vast knowledge of the human body and dispensing medical advice. <laughs> and she opened her mouth, and that came out. <laughs> the saga of how Dr. Ganjavago made her way to our fair city <laughs> continues to unfold in my head. Maybe she finally healed, by which I mean euthanized, everyone in her village and needed a new challenge. Maybe she just got sick of it. She started to get a big head, and she realized she's in Russia. She thinks, fuck this place, I'm out of here, I'm going to America. And moves to the States to take her rightful place in the world as a doctor. She tries to get a job at a clinic or a hospital or something, she's like, hey, I am doctor. And everyone here is like, uh, no you're not. So she has to get a job at some shitty back alley pot dispensary where she's dealing with assholes like me all day who just want a little plastic card that says we're allowed to buy weed even though we don't even fucking smoke it so we're just wasting her fucking time. <laughs> this train of thought is suddenly derailed by, by the blood pressure machine beeping that it's done. Having grown up with a mom who's a nurse, I know that normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. And that if you stray too much above that, even a little, you're in trouble. She looks at the machine and says, 184 over 111, without even a hint of concern in her voice. <laughs> like at all. At this point, I kind of panic because I know that's not good. So I ask her, isn't that a little high? But I didn't hear her response to that question because I was no longer listening, seeing as I was too focused on the fact that I'm about to die. And I know this because I'd already pulled out my phone to Google blood pressure 184 over 111. And it said, oh my God, get to a fucking hospital. You're about to die. For those of you keeping score, my doctor had just been outperformed by a computer, but not in the awe-inspiring dramatic sense of Kasparov losing a chess match to Deep Blue for the first time in human history. This was more like when the computer reminds you that your spelling is on par with that of a nine-year-old. I sort of went on autopilot after that, the way you do when you're on a long drive somewhere. You just let your mind wander until you reach your destination. All I know for sure is that I ended up leaving with not only my weed card, but also a heightened sense of my own mortality. <laughs> I'm all freaked out. Now I gotta call a real doctor, the guy I go to when I'm actually sick and need to be made better. I go see my regular doctor the next morning and he takes my blood pressure, old school, with the cuff and stethoscope, like a goddamn professional, <laughs> because that's the way they taught him when he went to medical school, which is where doctors come from. <laughs> and it comes out 118 over 74. Totally healthy. I tell him what happened about my surreal Twilight Zone experience. And he says, oh yeah, those machines are really unreliable. It's nothing to get worked up over, though. You should really try to relax more. Dave Callens. <laughs>